smoking in the hole. Said I want you juice. Good salute. <laughs> Thank you, Boyle. Good to see you, Frankie. Good to see you, man. Now, uh, interesting couple of weeks for you, I imagine. Yeah, it's been you, bizarre. You've been in the High Court. Uh, you took the Daily Mirror. If you haven't seen this story, I'm sure most of you had. Frankie took the Daily Mirror to um, uh, court because of uh, they accuse you of being racist. Yeah, this is a racist, a racist comedian. OK, and, uh, and you must be used to a fair amount of negative press because of some of the material you do obviously attracts that. Sure. And you're presumably relatively OK about some of the comments that around you. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, great about, I'm great about most stuff. Got a pretty thick skin. You've got a pretty thick skin, haven't you? I have to have a thick skin, yes. A fairly thick skin. I don't like some, <laughs> I mean, you know, sometimes people hurt you, hurt your feelings. If someone said to you that your beard makes you look a wee bit like Alan Sugar's sex face, <laughs> you wouldn't mind, would you? I'd have to go with that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you don't mind those kind of comments, I don't mind you? that kind of thing, but racism's a yeah. completely different, a completely different thing, and I thought it was really serious, and we had to go to court. I mean, the weird thing for me, is that I actually have hugely multiracial crowds. Yeah. So particularly when I come to London, like might be l like maybe half half the crowd only would be white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like it's kind of weird then to suddenly see this in the paper. This and, thing. And why do you think they said that about you? Because I was wondering whether this might be too simple. Because you write a column for the Sun, don't you? Yeah. And they're kind of rival papers. Do you think that had something to do with <laughs> yeah. it? Well, who, well, who knows? Because they didn't seem to have a case. They didn't have any witnesses. What was it based on? They said it was material where you were, it was character-based comedy you were doing, or it was... They, didn't, they just didn't seem, there didn't seem to be anything. So some of the jokes were things that had words in them like, I hate racism, I could never be a racist, I haven't finished hating all the white people yet. You <laughs> 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 were sort of sitting there going, how does this imply I'm a racist? Yeah. It was really strange. So you think maybe they just reached for a word and thought they'd get away with it? I, yeah, literally, literally. And, and what defence did they offer in court? What did they say? Almost nothing. There was no witnesses. There was just pretty much any joke that mentions race. They just kind of brought they, up. They trotted that out. And, yeah. did, and they, am I right in thinking they, they played some of your material in court for... It was, it was a jury you had as it well, was wasn't it? absolutely nightmarish. <laughs> 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 if you can imagine, like, the, like, a joke is something that happens between an audience and, and the, the performer at the time, so actually to have it dragged out in court... Because normally, I guess, it's late night. People have... They've come knowing what they're getting. Yeah. They've come wanting your material and they're in a kind of mood for comedy. These guys are sitting, it's middle of the day. It's like looking at a mermaid on a mortuary slab. <laughs> That's what it's like. It's just nothing seems funny. And the point passed where it was supposed to be funny. So you're sitting going, well, why did you use Emmanuel Adebayor in that joke? And I'm going, well, because it used to be Kevin Keegan. And, <laughs> you know, Kevin Keegan got too old. Did it, did it get any laughs in the courtroom? No, you couldn't really tell. You think you got the odd wee laugh, and then people would come out, no, it's court, you know? <laughs> so just out of context, it was a horrible experience. Yeah. And yet you won the case. Yeah, yeah. And how much were the damages they gave you? I got 50-something uh, thousand pounds, which I've given to Reprieve, who are a charity who work with people in death so row. it's great you so. gave it to charity. So obviously it wasn't, it wasn't you trying to get something out of them. It was just doing your name. Uh, well, I'm Phil, because I saw it and I thought, OK, in a way, you're an easy target to them, is maybe what they thought. Yeah, yeah. I think. Uh, you're back on tour. Frankie's back on tour, I'm very pleased to say. And the tour is called Last Days of Sodom. <laughs> OK? Uh, you always have those kind of titles. But last time I spoke to you, yeah. you told me you were giving up touring for good. That, yeah. the, the tour you were doing back then, that was definitely, absolutely the last time you were ever going on tour. This is absolutely the last time. <laughs> this is... It's just like... I think we kind of live in a zombie culture where no one ever retires. Do <laughs> so, I mean? Madonna's still getting her tits out. <laughs> Madonna's, Madonna's tits look like the kind of things you buy in a pet shop for dogs to chew on as a treat. <laughs> Somebody's got to go, it's going to be me. <laughs> Uh, OK, let's talk about this. You do attract a lot of criticism, uh, and sometimes you will put jokes out there, remarks out there, which clearly upset people. Yeah, yeah. How do you justify that to yourself? Do you ever filter yourself? Do you ever think, OK, that's going to be too far, I shouldn't say that? Or is there no such thing for you? Well, I think you need to be honest. I mean, I think there's things that everybody would and wouldn't say. I think there's also a thing now where people, they confuse the target of the joke and the subject of the joke. So, like, you, you see this in the papers a lot, do you know what I mean? Well, I'll, I'll get... A, I'll do, say I've got a joke at the minute and it's like, uh, Wayne Rooney's had a hair transplant, somebody should tell him that they do faces now as well. <laughs> right? <laughs> And by the time that hits the papers, it's like, oh, this terrible joke about face transplants. You're like, no, it's about Rooney and... It's about Wayne Rooney's unfortunate <laughs> face. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a joke, cos you don't mean that, of course, I suppose, or... Yeah, well, yeah. well, lots of things are like that, though. You think, there's a, there's a thing in, particularly in the press, where they sort of go, oh, we don't like this kind of joke, we don't like these kind of things. 
And you think, but you do, you like to titillate your readers with them. Mm. They say, oh, you shouldn't have said this. And you think, well, don't print it then. Yeah. It's, it's like a flash of being up in front of a judge and the judge saying, you're accused of approaching a lady in a park and showing her one of these. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. So, so they're feeding off it in a different way. Yeah, they, they feed off it, but also they sort of, they, they change the, the sense of it, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. But there must be some subject. Are there any topics, any subject matters that you would think were taboo that you wouldn't be comfortable? Like you're a father. Yeah. Uh, you got two children. Yeah. Okay. Do you ever think the jokes, you know, about children or about the relationship with children or you know the fact children, does that bother you? Would you think, okay, or do you not equate the jokes ever with reality? It depends what. Well, the jokes are fictions, but it depends what. It depends what the joke is. Do you know what I mean? So saying something isn't a fit subject for a joke is a bit like saying it isn't a fit subject for a movie. It depends what the movie's like and what yeah. it's about, you know? Do people heckle you ever or are they scared of you? Because I get the feeling, because before I met you the first time, I thought, okay, you struck me as being, you might be kind of aggressive. Because on stage you're very confident and you're quite bold with these ideas and quite tough. I thought, he's probably a, a, a guy who drinks very heavily. I thought, <laughs> I thought you might be on drugs. To. And I was worried. I thought, okay, but then I met you and you were nothing could be further from the truth. You don't even drink, do you? No, no, man. Okay, uh, so do people, are people, are the audience a little bit scared of you, do you think? No, but I think the heckles are getting clearer. <laughs> <laughs> people are really starting to enunciate now. So what, you kind know? Of, what kind of heckles do you get? I do this, I do this big bit in the news show about Michael Jackson's trial and stuff. And at the end, there's a bit where a, a guy who's obviously, he was a nice guy, he was just a mad Michael Jackson fan. He's waited for the end of that bit, and then he went, Long after your memory has gone, Michael Jackson's memory will live on. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, in the nightmares of his victims. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a nice moment you shared, didn't yeah. you? Know? Uh, I was amazed when I found this out because when we said to Frankie, look, do you want to come? When the, when the court case was over, I thought, great, let's get you on and talk about this. Um, but you, you almost didn't make it down because you were in Belfast yep. and you said, I might not be able to make it over in time. And I thought, we'll just hop on a plane. But you wouldn't just hop on a plane. No, I'm terrified of flying. Well, actually, to be specific, I'm terrified of dying. <laughs> you know what? If you, could, if you could crash a plane into a mountain and not die, I would be the first guy on a plane. <laughs> but planes don't crash much. They, not much. Yeah, but no hardly at all. Hardly at all. I don't think anyone likes flying. I think people are lying about it. You look in the queue and like, everybody looks terrified, man. <laughs> you never see a conga going onto a plane going, brilliant, we're about to pay eight pounds for Pringles. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually, it is just, it's just the fear of death. It's just the not trusting the technology that stops you from flying. It's Do just, you fly ever? I, I used to, like the last flight I did, I had this quite crazy girlfriend and we went to Dominican Republic and I used to have to take lots of Valium to do the flight. And uh, sh the night before, we'd had an argument before the flight, so she threw my Valium away, <laughs> and she told me that we were taking off into a hurricane. <laughs> 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 so I got this, uh, I went to the doctor at the hotel, and I said, uh, oh, what can you do? And he said, oh, I'll, I'll give you something really strong. And he gave me this kind of own brand Valium, which I took, and that's like my last memory of the whole thing. <laughs> but apparently, as the flight was taken off, I was so frightened that I tried to hug a man. <laughs> I tried to hug the man beside me, and obviously this was like, you know, this is 10, 15 years ago, and like nowadays I'd get shot by an air marshal. <laughs> <laughs> no, which would probably be a nice way for you to travel. Probably. So you don't go to America much then, I guess. You can't. Or, not, or... not at all, no. So when you, when you go back to Scotland, yeah. you don't fly back to Scotland? No, I get the train up. I get the train up. And from Belfast, you got the ferry over? I would drove down all the way from Belfast. It took 12 hours. We just hallucinated our way to London. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's, but it's irrational, this fear. It's not irrational. It's get, you know, the irrational part of it is that probably dying in an air disaster isn't that bad. You know, it's probably, as ways to go, it's probably a great view. <laughs> <laughs> then your head gets pulled off like a champagne cork. <laughs> you know, it's, it's probably not the worst. <laughs> 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 We've got a clip. We've got a clip of uh, Frankie performing the new DVD. The current this is this this is the current tour, isn't it? Yep. So you can get this in time for Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, the comic laureate of Broken Britain is what the Times call you. Have a look at this. This is Frankie Boyle in action. We're a bit politically disengaged in Scotland at the minute, aren't we? We think that NATO is just a nickname you give to a guy who lost a foot to diabetes. <laughs> It's good to be hated by morons. It is. It's good to wake up in the morning knowing that there's people out there that would dance in my grave, but if I get buried at sea, they'll all fucking drown. <laughs> uh, will you join us in a minute? We've got Melissa's going to teach us some roller skating. Cool, you up for that? Yeah, yeah totally. You haven't man. roller skated professionally before. 
I've done it very, very badly okay, as a child. Yeah. I did it once when I was young. It's an awful experience, but I'm, I'm game for it. Congratulations on the court case. It was, uh, it was good to see you Thanks stand up for man. yourself. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr Frankie Boyle. <laughs> Thanks, Frankie. Good stuff. OK, we're going to take a break. Join me afterwards. All of my guests will be coming out here, and Melissa will be teaching us how to roller skate in a very special challenge. And we have music. <laughs> Welcome back. As we found out early on, Melissa was a... You were a kind of a, an award-winning mm -hmm. champion roller skater in your youth. Yes. Uh, and you said you could maybe teach us a few moves. So show us something simple or... or well, something I think good. first we should just warm up our groin <laughs> and our legs a little bit. Like, just on the spot. <laughs> but don't go forward. <laughs> and we, the first thing we're going to do oh. is hold on to me. You, you hold on to each other. <laughs> what? <laughs> No, okay, right, you, Frank, you can go like, behind. Right. I feel okay. like I've had a Listen, stroke on a ship. this covered. <laughs> and yes. in. Oh. OK, out, out. and in. in. Go on. Out. <laughs> and in. Frank, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave me. <laughs> OK, 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 and now we're going to do a spin. I'm going to go really, really fast. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> okay, can I have a ramp, please? I'd like a really big ramp. Oh, that's right, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh your shoot, that's really high. Today. Come on, Vanessa. <laughs> Well, we need a crash mat for... I think Frankie should no, go can't... next, to be honest with you. Lisa. To be honest, I think you're going to need to Lisa. push me really fucking hard. <laughs> I just ready? You will hold your hand and... No, we need a crash mat. We need no, a crash don't... mat. No, 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 no. <laughs> don't do it. Well, I'm... I'm... So, ready, ready? You help me on the other side. Drag him. Come on, Jonathan. Ah! <laughs> ready? OK, let's do it. Thank you, Avery's. I do it if I get a right good shove. <laughs> and yet you won't fly, but you'll let two people push you over a firework. <laughs> We're all in this together. I've okay? never, never felt older. Come on, Frank. <laughs> hold it, hold it. <laughs> Move my helmet. <laughs> OK, Frankie, you can do it. Great rehearsal. <laughs> great rehearsal. <laughs> yeah, good work, boys. Good work. Yeah. Uh, good work. That's it for Frankie, for Ali, and of course, Melissa George, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, let's sit down. <laughs> let's sit down so we can enjoy the music. <laughs> now, this is the best way to get to it. <laughs> Come on. Come on. No one's noticed. No one's noticed. <laughs> It's fine. OK, that's it. That was smooth. That was smooth. How have you still burning? I can you smell something burning. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first time we've actually set fire to someone. Oh, have man. you been injured at work? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a long story. <laughs> All right, OK, well, listen, thanks to all my guests tonight, especially for joining in the end, which was, frankly, both dangerous and unnecessary, it has to be said. <laughs> so, Melissa George, Frankie Boyle and, of course, Ollie Moores. Thank you to Richard Cheese and Lounge Against the Machine. <laughs> <laughs>